Welcome to our Affinity Designer Vector Illustration tutorial. I'm going to run through the full process for turning your cute little robot dude into a finished vector illustration. The good news is you can grab every brush used in this tutorial right now for free so you can follow along. We've just launched our Vault Vector Brush Pack for Affinity Designer and to celebrate we've created a mini pack which includes a selection of brushes taken from the full pack along with the robot sketch and finished Affinity Designer files that we're about to create. You'll find the link in the description to download this free mini pack and we'd also really love if you check out the full version of Vault while you're there as it's a massive pack with over 150 vector brushes plus dozens of object styles, paper textures, colour palettes. Ok, enough chit chat, let's dive in. In the Affinity Designer doc I've got my initial rough sketch that we're going to work from. I also have our finished TV guy illustration here as a reference as I'm aiming for a similar finish style plus I'll steal his colours too. I'll create a layer for these references and put both images in there. I'm going to hide the TV guy for now and I'll reduce the opacity of the sketch so I can see what I'm doing. A quick note on organisation. Usually I'm really meticulous in layer naming, grouping and so on. But for something like this, I want my focus to 100% be on the illustration process itself and not wrangling lots and lots of layers. I'm going to begin with drawing all the basic shapes using the pen tool. So here's a quick fire run through of how I'll be using it. Now there's a lot more to the pen and node tools than this, but these techniques and shortcuts are must know stuff. Click to create points of a shape and click on the starting point to close it off. When you click next, it'll be a new shape. If you hold down shift while clicking, it'll make sure the line is kept to a perfect 90 degree angle. If you want to draw a line without closing the shape, just hit escape when you're finished so you'll start a new line or shape with your next click. To draw a curve segment, click and drag in the same movement and you'll see the curves and handles. Here's a real time saver. When you're using the pen tool, if you hold command at any point, you'll temporarily switch to the node tool, meaning you can reposition nodes or handles and then let go to carry on creating your shape. If you switch to the node tool, you can edit your line or shape. Two very important shortcuts here too. Alt click a node to make it a sharp connection or control click to make it curved. Honestly, this can save you so much hassle when fixing pads. Back to the pen tool, you can also make the very first point of a shape a curve. You can see here the first example is just a regular click, the second is a click drag and the end result is a curve segment at the start and end points. Finally, for some fine control, let's recreate this shape which has a sharp angle change. You can draw it and then edit the nodes after. Really not the way to do it. Here's two alternatives. First, start drawing your curve, but control click on the node with the sharp angle change. This changes the node type so your next node won't be influenced by the previous curve. The second method, when you reach the node you want to have the sharp angle change, this time click and hold and then press Alt. You can now change the exit angle before making your next click. Right now I don't care about the strokes or colour as I'll add those later, I just want all the major shapes created first. I want the style to be loose, so I'm not going for perfect shapes, curves or angles. In theory, if you're going to use irregular strokes later, you can use some of the primitive shapes as those kind of strokes will add some irregularity, but I'm just going to draw everything for this one. It's the same process over and over. Click to add a new point, click hold drag to make that point a curve. I switch to the node tool to tidy up mistakes as I go, and you can use the A shortcut to do this, or with the pen tool selected, you can hold the command on Mac or control on PC to temporarily switch to the node tool. When you let go of the key, it'll switch back to the pen tool. One important thing to think of at this step is how all the shapes fit together. For example, the head will be on top of the neck. So when I'm drawing the top of the neck, the shape can extend into the head area as this part will be covered by the head. For some shapes, I'll end up placing them inside other shapes so that their edges will be clipped to the container shape. So I don't need to invest time in being precise in areas that will be hidden. I'm not 100% sure on how I'm going to tackle the wheels part yet. 
I want to make sure the bottom part isn't too dark and distracting. So for now, I'll add in some of the details and figure this out when I get to the color stage. With the main shapes done, I'm going to start adding the strokes in color. First though, there's a couple of key lines I want to add. I call these structural lines or strokes as they're not just decorative, but help to de define the form of the shape. I'll use the brush tool B, uh, select one of the liners from the brush set and quickly draw these in. I'm using a Wacom tablet for this, but you can just as easily use your mouse or even stick with the pen tool to click the points for this. You'll notice for the neck lines, I've drawn through the neck itself. This is because I placed these inside the neck shape so the edges will be tidy. Okay, I'm going to set up the colors. For this, I'm going to use global colors. It's not entirely necessary for this illustration as I already have a good idea of the colors I want to use, but it can be an absolute lifesaver at times. On the swatches tab, click on the hamburger menu and choose add global color. It's cut off my screen recording, but that's what I'm clicking on. When the window pops up, first click and hold on the eyedropper icon, move the mouse over the color you want to sample and let go. You'll see the color in the eyedropper selection. Make sure you click this new color so it appears in the new global color box and then click add. You can obviously manually add any colors you want here too by using the sliders or typing in color values. You'll see the swatches panel now shows document colors. I'll just work my way through and add any colors that I want. Here's a super quick example of why global colors are so powerful. Here's our TV guy who's been set up with global colors. I'll make sure I have nothing on the canvas selected. Command or Control D to deselect everything. If I double click on a global color, I can edit it. Now, anywhere in the document that uses that color, stroke or fill, will be updated to the new color. It's a super way to experiment with colors or create new variations of graphics. Okay, back to our robot. I'm going to pull out my brushes panel. Using the select tool V, I'll start to click on one of my brushes to add a stroke. For all this stuff, shortcuts are king. With an object selected, I can use the square brackets to increase or decrease the stroke thickness, so you can quickly adjust as you go. Making sure my stroke color is selected, I'll click on my dark global color to apply it. So here's one of the most powerful shortcuts in Affinity Designer. With my stroke selected, I'm going to hit Command or Control C to copy it. However, I'm not going to paste the entire object, I'm only going to paste the style of the object. Select the object you want to apply the style to and press Command or Control plus Shift and C to paste only the style. This is a massive time saver and I can't recommend it highly enough. Another method is to use the eyedropper tool. With an object selected, if you press I and then click on any color on the screen, it will set the selected object's fill or stroke color to the new color. I'll make sure my fill is selected and apply a fill color. You can use the X shortcut to switch between whether you're working with your stroke or fill color so you don't have to keep clicking on that little tiny arrow. I'll add one more global color for some of the minor metal parts. I'll use something desaturated as I don't want these to stand out. Okay, here's the second super powerful shortcut we use, paste inside. If you select the objects you want, cut them, Command or Control X, then select the object they will be pasted inside of and press Command Alt and V and it'll paste them inside and the edges will be clipped inside that shape. Again, this is a massive time saver and we use it all the time. And here's a third big thing to keep an eye on, layer order. You can manage this from the layers panel, but it's often very often not necessary to even look at this when you know a few shortcuts. Selecting an object, then using command and left square bracket, move something down one layer. Command and right square bracket, move something up one layer. Pressing either of these a few times will usually get things in the right position. But if you also hold down shift as well, it won't just move it up one layer, it will move it all the way to the top. Alternatively, you could move the neck below the head too. It all depends on how you've set everything up. So everything else for this step is just the same thing over and over again. Add brush strokes, add color, arrange layer order. It's that easy. To give the body a more 3D look, I'll add some shading. This is another technique I use constantly. I'll use the eyedropper tool, eye, to set the color to an existing color and then change the lightness or darkness or saturation of this to a subtle variation of the main color so that they all complement each other well. 
Again, you could add these new colors to the global colors if you think you'll be changing them later, but I'm pretty happy with these, so I won't bother. I'll just swap the colors around so that the light is on top and the main colors in front. Alright, time to tackle the tank treads. I've decided to draw in individual plates here for some more detail. I either draw the rectangular shapes using the pen tool or I can quickly copy it. Also, if you hold down command or control and then click and drag an object or selection, you'll create a copy of it. So for these individual plates, I'm copying each one using the node tool A to fix the shape and using the layer arrangement shortcut, command plus square brackets to put them in the right order. Just rinse and repeat on both sides. I'll quickly create an inner shape here, apply some color to the elements and we'll come back to this shortly. Now I'm going to work my way around the illustration adding some hard shadows which give everything a little bit more depth. These will either be done in the dark colour I'm using throughout or a variation of existing colours. The shapes I'm drawing will be pasted inside the elements that I'm shading. I'll create another global colour for the orange shadow colour as I think I'll probably need to tweak this when I start seeing the whole piece evolve. plate's done, I'll tweak this colour now just to make it a little bit more subtle. Now I could stop here as the illustration is already looking quite tidy, but I'm going to keep going and start adding some detailed brushes now. This is where a pack like Vault really shines. Having a huge selection of brushes can really help you to create some very unique artwork. So let's start adding in some strokes from our mini pack now. You can use the pen or brush tool for these, whichever you're most comfortable with. First, I'm going to merge the two fingers into one shape. Select both and click the add icon. This is simply so I can use a single stroke with a multi-line brush to shade both of them at the same time. One neat tip, if you select a path with the node tool selected, you can change the stroke direction by clicking the reverse curves icon. Once again, the paste inside shortcut speeds this up massively, so I'll repeat this over and over. I'll do the same thing for the light parts. There are just strokes I can copy, draw or alt drag and reposition with the node select tool. I prefer the way they're done on the left side, so I'm going to kill off the ones on the right and thicken them up a little bit. From here on out it's more of the same, experiment with different touches to add more personality to the piece.
One final touch. I'm going to use one of our paper texture object styles that you get in the full version of Vault. I absolutely love these because of how easy they are to use. I'll create a new layer on top of everything else and draw a rectangle over everything. All I have to do is open our object styles, pick one and click it. It's as simple as that. This is a perfectly repeating texture as well, so I can cover any area at all with it and it'll tile nicely. Changing the size of the texture is easy too. Using the fill tool, G, I can change the scale or rotation to suit. And that's our robot done. If you're interested, please do make sure to check out the full version of our Vault Vector Brushes Pack for Affinity Designer in the link below, as it's crammed full of content to create artwork in a huge range of styles. So please check it out and thanks a million. Bye.